God's desire expressed to us through the Torah is that we walk and live righteously. The reality is none of us are able to do that alone and all by ourselves. I, the Spirit, feels a timid toward day number one of the Torah portion of Shoftim. Let's go to Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter number 16, and start reading with verse 18. Appoint judges and officers within all your gates, which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you according to your tribes, and they shall judge the people with righteous right ruling. Do not distort right ruling. Do not show partiality, nor take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. Follow righteousness, righteousness alone, so that you live and inherit the land which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you. Do not plant for yourself any tree as an Asherah near the slaughter place of Yahweh your Elohim that you make for yourself. And do not set up a pillar which Yahweh your Elohim hates. And we'll get to that last part a little later. Judges and officers, the two Hebrew words here, judges is shoftim, officers, literally sheriffs in our better estimation, is shotrim. So two roles here are given to us for those that operate in the midst of the body, in the midst of the kingdom, to enable the people to walk righteously. Now, no one wants Barney Fife running around with a badge and a whistle and writing out tickets, and we don't need anyone hollering citizens arrest either, for those who are of Andy Griffith uh, awareness. There are those, however, that are given to us that help us to see and understand what justice is. There are two main components to the Torah. One is righteousness, sadaka, and the other is justice, mishpatim. Yah wants righteous people to dispense righteous judgment in the behalf of those who are oppressed. We're not allowed to turn our blind eyes to the side one way or the other and ignore the needs of those that are in the midst of us when we see someone that is being oppressed, someone that is being abused, someone that is being intimidated, manipulated, uncontrolled. When they cry out to Yah for help, Yah may send a messenger with a drawn sword and sever somebody in half. That's likely not to happen. What Yah most often will do will raise up a judge in the midst of us to defend the widows, the orphans, and those who are being oppressed, manipulated, or controlled. The issue has been, then, that because we've come out of systems where perhaps there was leadership that was faulty in some means, uh, or at least we perceived it to be as much. I know of many people who walked out of a denominational setting, some building somewhere, and looking over their shoulder, they were carrying a bucket load of offense over some issue. Maybe they went to their pastor and tried to tell him, well, the Shabbat is not on Sunday, it's on Saturday, and he didn't agree with them. Or else he explained in a way, well, this is the Lord's day, this is the day that we now worship on in the church or in the system that we're in. The denomination has agreed that this is what we will do. Because a pastor didn't put his career on the line, stick his neck way out, uh, possibly losing his position, um, somebody may have gotten offended at him and said, well, you know, you're, you're just blind and you won't know the truth. And in a huff, they walked away. I've been in that position. It's not an easy one to be in. And uh, it did cost me my, my role as a church pastor. It did cost me my pastoral career in that setting. It was a tough choice to make, but it, for me, it was the only choice I could make. There are other men, or perhaps women, that have not been able to make that other that same choice. Who are we to throw stones at them? Who are we to judge them 
according to our the measure with which we had judged ourselves. Everybody's not the same. So the issue is that people, for whatever reason, however it came about, they deemed an offense to be necessarily to require them to leave wherever it was that they were. And out of that, they have determined, I don't want any leadership ever again. No one's going to ever tell me what to do again. There is a problem with that, a scriptural-based problem. If we go to the book of Ephesians and we look at the, the structure that Yeshua has given to us, it says in Ephesians 4, verse 11, And he himself, this is referencing Messiah Yeshua, gave some as emissaries, or what we have called apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as shepherds and teachers. The purpose of these roles is to perfect the set-apart ones to the work of service of a building up of the body of the Messiah until we all come to the unity of belief and the knowledge of the Son of Elohim to a perfect man, to a measure of the stature of the completeness of Messiah. And the goal is that we no longer be children and tossed around by every wave of doctrine that comes through. Because many have denied the roles of Yeshua-appointed leadership, not allowing the function of a shepherd or a pastor in their midst, not allowing a teacher to come in and say systematically, this is what the word says, this is how that the word flows, this is what the prophets are teaching. Because we deny that, because we deny the role of an apostle or an emissary, someone who has the authority in Yeshua to come and set up a congregation or correct a congregation to appoint pastors and teachers, uh, to lay on hands and see miracles and signs and wonders take place because we, um, we follow after the wrong prophets at times. There are genuine prophets. We just don't necessarily see that they have a fan page or, or on social media. I'll leave that right there. The roles of these leaders, it, Yeshua has appointed to his body to perfect us, mature us, grow us, structure us, train us, equip us, and enable us to stop being a bunch of immature believers who know, don't know what to do, but rather an equipped army, an equipped um, a community that knows how to function together. Because we failed in this area, in many places, sadly I have found, we are yet in a place of accusations and uh, divisions and distractions, and we find ourselves full of little nuggets of knowledge and understanding, but we don't know how to relate well together, and we're not building bridges toward those who do not understand us. For those of us who burned a bridge that we crossed over from where it was that we were to the place that we are now, and we, we thought we'll never go back there again, how else is anyone from that place going to relate with you? I've had to hear the voice of Yeshua saying, son, you need to go back and start putting some planks back in that bridge. You need to rebuild some relationships. You need to find a way. To, to relate to some folks without trying to tell them everything you think you know. This is an humbling experience. Judges would rise up in the midst of us to help us in this process and to give us a ruling as to this is legitimate and this is not. This is the right way, and that's the wrong way. So we need to pray, Father, set your judges among us, not to reign in terror over us, but to teach, train, and equip us to walk uprightly. And understand that today there may be a shy little girl that may be watching. So if you are, hello, Mary, Miriam. Hope you have a great day. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, shalom. Shalom.